Hello. So in today's video, I am going to be talking about uh, algorithm building. Um, I'm going to be using the the functions that I made videos on uh, as containers, and I'm going to be showing how to actually make the the core framework for the algo, which uses these functions to make requests and so on. So our framework that we I'm going to build here is going to get data to market data that is then it's going to check if that data creates a signal um, so that signal will be if the price reaches a certain characteristic or a certain level and then we will create a buy or sell signal based on that. Once the signal is created, uh, we'll then create a position we then wait for another signal uh, so and then we'll finally close our position. Alright, so that's basically the steps we're going to do for our algo. Uh, right then, so the code. So the way I have my code set up uh, in, in terms of framework is I have a, a controller. I have a controller which then calls the algo itself and then the algo is um, is basically you have an init uh, an init function in in Python that just initializes the uh, class. You've then got a loop, a while loop, which runs infinitely. Um, that that basically means a while loop that runs infinitely. Um, and then you have these other functions that create that uh, get data, whether that be market data, uh, position data, whatnot. Uh, create position. And then close position. Okay, so if we look here, I've made this uh, temporary. Um, py uh, Python file, and we're basically following the framework of this. So we are going to use this as a class. We're going to have something along the lines of this. So we have a class here, controller functionality. Um, that's just what we're naming our class itself. We then have an object we are calling from. So if you can see, predefined functions, yeah, you can see I've got a lot of algos here, and these are each um, algos doing certain tasks. So let's make a new one. Um, and you can see if we say, look at that. You can see the frame. This is just an example one I made a while ago. So you can see here we got the algo, um, that being a class name, and each of our algos have a, a similar sort of setup, where we have a run function which it contains a while loop, uh, a create order um, function or method, where it returns something. So we'll say a method. Uh, signal generation just to kind of let you know um, methods there are the two types of um, f functions let's say I'm using the function as a short term it's not technically correct you'd call these methods because they return values and if they return no value they're called procedures but just for simplicity sake I just call them functions because we're not really doing a 
a programming test out. We were just trying to make some code. So yeah, you can see here is a signal generation here. And yeah, that's about it in this example here. And you can see we're running a run function. So if you say def run, and then we're going to have a, a def. Yeah. And here you can see if we say temp import algo zero, you can see here. <coughs> By importing it, we've basically created, we have initialized it here, stored it in this object. And then in that object, we're running the run function, which is this part. <coughs> so when we, so we would run this class, which would then run into this. So if you look at this, you can see we have an init function here. So if we copy that in, if we just copy this whole. So this is like our base. Um, when we call these functions, we use this as our base, and then we, we then from that we call off the function that we use to get data to send orders across to look at position and so on. So yeah, this is basically um, this example here is looking at market data, but we're not going to be doing that. So we will just. Okay, you can see in, so this is our defined functionality class. Uh, this is basically our our main um, class when it comes to these functions. We we use this as our base and and call other functions accordingly. functions from. Um, we're then saying get a list of epics. Uh, this epic I believe is uh, Dow Jones. On IG it's called um, Tech 100 or something like that. Something like that, I can't remember. Um, we're then basically saying um, we're then basically saving these list of epics uh, in in defined functionality so these are epics that we can look at um, I can't remember why I made this I think I made it for uh, so that I could switch between market data mar market data sockets and getting market data as is so market data as is market data sockets um, and then we store these in our minute data tab uh, yeah, so if we have multiple epics, we will solve it in this map. Or save them in this map, yeah. So, if we look at... So I should have kept that. So, I'll talk you through what's going on here. So we've got a, a, um, a, a method function, signal generation. We've got a self here because we have to define it. That's the way you define a class. Epic, which is the, the unique identifier for each instrument under IG. Uh, we then have to import... Oh, is it? Yeah, so this is basically saying, leave that there. So this is basically saying our signals. So this is what is going to be outputted. 
um, we then have a timer here. We're then getting the date time and we're getting the data. We're then checking if our time step doesn't equal none. If it does equal none, it means the program hasn't run for the first time. So then we're then saying get the difference from the timestamp now minus the timestamp than what it was. It'll probably be a very large value. Um, no, no. So we're basically checking what the, the difference is, and since if it's, this returns um, the value back within seconds, we can then say if that value is larger than if that. Value Yeah, so we're basically getting the first timestamp here. If our timestamp has not been set yet, then we go into this part where we get data, set our timestamp, append it to the data. We then check if this is uh, bigger than three. So at least we've got three units of data within our list. Um, here we go on to difference seconds. If that's bigger than our 10 minute variable, which we say here is six, then we go into here and add it on to that. And then we get to a point where if the length of it is bigger than three, so assuming we've been through 10 intervals of this, we then go down and check our data. So this is the way we check our data. So this will be for the very latest data because we're doing from the list minus one. We're doing from the list minus two, which will be the second last value. We're then checking if their differences are bigger than 10 units. If that's the case, then we set a buy level of one. Otherwise, we set it to a buy level of a sell level of one. We then clear our list. We then set, um, we then set our variables like that within our cell signals uh, variable that we're outputting, and then return that. So you'd have something like instead of that, you'd have something like this: uh, self dot signal generation. The epic would be uh, self dot list epics zero and then so you would want to do something to generate a position now so you would have something along the lines of position generation so def create uh, position epic um, Now again, going back to the other one was a much easier way of doing it. Um, I mean, I've pretty much just I'm copying the exact same example I made before, but just going through it. Um, now there is a bit. The reason why I'm copying and pasting it is because there are some finicky aspects to it, which you have to go into and debug every single time. And I thought for the sake of the video, it would just be quicker if I do it this way. Um, so yeah, jumping into it. So our signal levels. Let's call that um, sig. So, actually refractor that. Yeah, so we have here, we're getting the epic. We're then creating the signal from it. We're then passing that signal into create positions. So here. We're getting the epic, the signals, we're then checking if our signals equals none, so then we return nothing, as in there's no point going further into the function. Um, we have a key here, which is basically, um, it works out whether we're going in a buy or a sell position, or a direction. 
and then we then check if our, we, we already have a position here. If we do, then obviously we don't want to continue, but the values that this returns back is of a panda series. And sometimes it can be an empty data frame, but I found that this is the best way to to check um, if the data frame is empty or not. So we just check if it's an instance of this. If our position is an instance of this, then we assume a position already exists. If it returns back nothing, then we assume that there's nothing there. Or if it returns back an empty data frame, then we assume nothing's there, and we create our position accordingly. Uh, you can see here it's, it's red because we need to do an import. We need to do uh, import pandas as pd. Yeah, you can see that works. So we find our position by epic. We then create the position accordingly. Yeah, and now we need to check our closing positions. Now I think I've already referenced that as well here. No, I have not. All right, this this will be the only one I make from scratch then. Okay, so. Um, So we basically say uh, something like this. You're basically going to get the position. Um, So this assumes that there is a position. Um, I believe this returns back. This returns back a position list. That might not work because you're returning back a position list. So, I would assume you would want to get the first position and then work from there. If there's a panda series, then we assume it's a position there. Because we're basically returning this as a list back to position, so you, we would want to get to the first item in the in the list and check if that's a panda series, and then you assume there's a position there. So we are basically then saying um, why don't we pass signals in again? Yeah, so. Yeah, so that way we're basically saying if the signals um, match what our, our, our buy and our sell criteria, we'll also use that for our closing criteria. So, yeah, you can just say something like um, use similar sort of thing. We're basically saying if signals equal none. Yeah, so we have signals equal none, return key equals none. Um, yeah, and then we basically say if it matches our criteria, if it has something, then we just say self dot um, df dot close position. We have a deal ID and a size. We know we have a position. 
we can just say position uh, zero equals our position. So that way we're just passing the whole position into it, into the closed position and we don't have to deal with it. Um, you can see it, we, we can we can take on the position. And that deals with closing it. Yeah, I think that pretty much makes sense. Let's have a go and debug. So debugging this. So I'll go through all the the core stuff that you have an understanding of. Um, so we're basically calling this. This is basically calling the same file we're in, but because it's the main, it doesn't know where to start. So we're basically calling the same file. We're then saying, let's get this class, and I want it to hit this and run this uh, f this this piece of code here. So if we go into it, the initialization part. So this is where we initialize um, almost all our objects that do and call the IG API back and forth. So this stuff I'm not really going to talk about. Um, they're just sockets and parameters for the stop loss we have. But let's do something like order management. So if we go into that, you then see you have initialize <coughs> self equals initialization, which is creating a an object from the class. So if we go into that, um, we then do this initialization part. I've spoken about this in the the um, the gathering data um, video I made. I'll link it in the description and to what part this references. But in this case, I've I've contained all of this into a class. So I I spoke about this, but I did it as a standalone function. But here I I engulf it all into a class. So yeah, if we go into it, if we go into initialize connection, which so that that then does this part part which then loops into this and when it gets an API key it then checks if that API key works well technically it doesn't check if it works it just initializes a connection and returns back an IG object it just goes back and yeah so then we then go to here where we initialize the connection Yeah, so in that that case, we increment by one. We got a new API key, returned it back as the object, and we then try, try creating the session. If then this then creates an error, then it'll be caught. It'll then go back, try a new API key, come back again, and it keeps doing that. Um, that's what the self initialization part does. That's what that um, that's what that whole part does over here. No, not this bit. Uh, this part. That's what this whole section here does. Yeah, so if we get out of that, get out of that. Yeah, so these basically do those. They all have their own um, own way of creating their own API key. Um, in, in terms of connection, because I didn't want to use the same API key on multiple, multiple uh, functions, because I thought IG would just block the whole thing and it just cause loads of errors. So they all, all have their own individual API key that they can reference. So yeah, if we get out of that, that's the initialization part. Um, yeah, so talking through it, uh, we get our epic. We then set that into our, uh, uh, our set of epics to look for. We then store that. So this this will be what we hold our data. Um, so at least three intervals of data that we hold in that. Um, setting a timestamp, and then this is where we run the meet of the algo. So 
What we say here is we get the epic, the first one, and because there's only one and because we stored it in the list, we only have to get the first one. We then generate a signal based off that. We then create a position and close a position based on the signals that we receive. So yeah, let's go into that. So you can see here, because we have no timestamp and our, our value isn't set, you can see it's none. We're then basically getting timestamp. I've spoken about this before in my other video about getting market data. Um, you get that. You then store that timestamp here. You can see that's that. Um, we append it to this under the key of the epic. We then check if it's bigger than three. No. We return the value back none. We then go into this. We X out. We then check if our position is there. If we have a position, our position is empty. And we throw an exception because I sort of consider that if it's empty that we should have returned none. Uh, if if position uh, len zero, if it's empty, then return. Yeah, just return. So let's try this again. Okay, so we're basically saying if it's if it's zero. Return, and you can see it jumps back to the. So it goes through it again and then comes back to here because I've put a stop. Well, not because I've put a stop, but it just has a habit of doing that, just jumping to the next thing. It sometimes skips iterations and debugging, but yeah. So if we go into our signal generation and we then put a cap so that here. We see it when three intervals have passed. Okay, so we've passed three intervals, and you can see here it returned out an error saying that we have that we've exceeded exceed the API allowance. Um, we then use that thing I was talking about earlier with the initialization, and we then increment up the API keys. So then that way we'll have a new fresh API key to work with. So where was I? Yep. Yep, so we've got that. We're then we've added a value to it. So if we have a look at that, so self dot minute, you can see here we have a key, and that key then stores um the market data we have at three three intervals. So actually it's four, but we because we passed three, we removed the the oldest one. So yeah, we then check if our cell. We then initialize them as none to be empty. We then get the first object, which is that. We then we then because the way this is uh, stored. So let's say object. If we say keys, yeah, you can see we have keys of instrument, dealing rules, and snapshot. Now I've spoken about this before about getting data, and I'll reference the links in the video. Um, but you can see here the instrument talks about uh, this aspect, so a DFB, daily funded bet, the name, uh, yada yada yada, dealing rules. So this is basically how large your stop loss can be, your your limit. Uh, your snapshot is basically the the price. Uh, this is the, the really Im the important stuff in this aspect. The, the price that we're interested in. So we have bid and offer. This the this is the spread. Uh, yeah. So the highest we can sell and the lowest we can buy. Um, and we're going to be using those to generate our diffs. So if we go through them, you can see here we have those. So you can see our old values with these. And our new values are these, pretty much the same. 
um, we have them minus each other. Uh, if the diff is bigger than 10, then we have a buy. If the diff is smaller than minus 10, then we have a sell. Um, yes. And you can see here, once we've passed them, we want to reset it. So we only look for three data points in the sequence. Now, because our none values are, are none, we're just going to return none. And we're going to keep looping through it until we have a a point where we see um, one of those signals being hit. Okay, and because that's probably going to take a very, very long time, let's uh, speed these things up, like doing something like this. So one of the cool things about um, about Python is that in whilst you're programming, you or whilst you're debugging something, you can append your own uh, values or change values in the fly. So we can do something like this. So if we say offer uh, diff we can make that equal 11. So we can see that obviously offer is bigger than 10, which is 11 right now. So we have a buy level equaling one. So if we go into that, you can tell that, okay, we're going into the signals now. We're then setting our signals to be, see that sell is none, buy is one. So if we go into that, we then create our positions. So our position is created like this. So if signals equal none, key equals none, buy level equals none, it doesn't, so it equals a buy, so that's our key value. We then have a position to check if we have a position already in that. I've spoken about that before. And something happened, and I don't know what. I should have debugged that as well. Damn it. Um, <clears throat> Alright, so let's just say for for debugging purposes, we're going to set signal here. We're going to make that equal. Uh, Bye. Uh, is equal to um, so one and cell here is equal to none. Yeah, no positions created. Right, so we have that. Let's just check this doesn't throw an error, because that could be the case. Oops, don't do that. Throws an error. Okay, so um. Well, we could just say, we could just do what we did before, saying that if the length of position equals zero, then we can, uh, we can say if it doesn't, doesn't equal zero, then we can return back the position we have received. Okay, so that seems like a work better. Okay, cool, because the position we got back was nothing, so let's try creating a position. Mm. Now, that didn't work for some reason either. Okay, so let's go back to that. Um,
unexpected sizes. Oh, that's what it meant. Okay, so we had a, an issue there. We put sizes in an S instead of just size. Um, yeah, so let's go back to that. Nope. Okay, that error can sometimes happen when you start the program up because let's say the first couple of um, API keys used had reached their limit then obviously the program will jump back to the first API keys so it can sometimes cause this issue so just waiting a minute or two usually helps resolve that and then just try again yeah so okay so we're on our create position let's go into that alright so we've gone into it so that's something We've gotten, we then go into that to get our market data. We then run that off to a size. We have our dealing rules we work out. I've spoken all this about, uh, about all these, um, all these other functions before in a previous video, which I'll link. Um, all right, so. We've opened a position, hurrah. Alright, so we've created a position. Okay, so a potential issue I've spotted here is that no matter what case is. Um, here, irrelevant if it's a buy or a sell, it will close the position no matter what. <laughs> so, I need to change this function. So, um, we've got a position up. So, you... but for some reason, it's not showing. Um, Oh, so just closed. Oh, okay. I think it created a limit and um, a stop loss. That's probably why. And it probably hit that. So that's probably why it closed. Um, let's change some aspects here. So we have a stop loss here. Um, So let's try that again. Let's create the position. Let's bring this stuff up and down. That we've got oh, some a bit of wiggle room. Alright, so if we go back into our code. So we, we then get a position, we can see that our, our position value here is a list. So if we say, so, so you can see here we, it is described as a series. Um, now I think we can... So what we're saying here, I mean, what it's already written here is saying, if it's a position, check if our signals previously gave us a buy or a sell. If they did, then close the position. You don't really want that. What you want to say is, check if the buy or sell signal is that, and and our does not does not equal a buy because if that's the case you're basically saying a buy signal has came and we 
want to exit our buy position, which is wrong. Um, you want to say something along the same line, uh, but does not equal sell. So that's just hmm. okay. So um, I think it's because we were creating signals in the single position. So let's get rid of that. Let's go into here. Okay, so you can see that we've passed the first barrier signals. Um, you can see that our... Actually, you don't even need that, do you? Yeah, so you can see we've gone on to here. Um, you can see that our signal is in fact a buy, but our position... Damn it. But our position, control C, control V, get rid of the first brace, is a buy. So you can tell there it doesn't work. So it goes back and loops around again. So let's go here. Let's then change this so that signals, signals um, equal. Uh. Yeah, just put it twice there. Generally in program you wanna you don't wanna do this approach where you have the the code twice repeated because it's quite wasted. It's just it's a bad practice, but in this case it's the simplest thing to do because otherwise if you do a return, you could put like in a a, a switch case, but then that's just gonna take a, a very long time. So um yeah, this seems like the easiest option right now. So yeah. Um You then say if buy equals none. Now, if it's a sell signal that we've got, which is the case. Oh, whoops. Uh, console sell signal we have in this case. Um, actually, let me try that again. So you can see we're, we're creating uh, the signals here in our console. That didn't work. That does work. We then go into close position, go into it, go into it, go into it. And the position has been closed. There you are. So yeah. Um, I mean, that's in a nutshell how to build a really rudimentary algorithm. Um, I mean, heck.
So I've, I've replaced the signals as being set to true all the time to try and create orders at all times. Okay, so you can see there. Position has been created. and then the position being closed. So let's speed this up because it's taking a bit of time. I just want to really throttle it. Um, Okay, so you can see on the left, uh, positions being opened, it's being closed. Multiple have been opened. Ooh. Yeah, so that's basically how you make a rudimentary algorithm. Um, just buys and sells based on practically nothing. But yeah, it just gives you an outline of how things work. Uh, there was a comment made before about how initializations work. So I just thought I'd give you a bit more detail on that um, while it goes wrong in the background. Um, initializations. So in, in DF, I had something like Something like this. I spoke about this before, but just to get a bit more data on it. Um, yeah, initial equals initialization. That uh, class here, and we have basic logging, our counter, initialize connection, and does that. Yeah. Cool. Um, I know this video is rather long, um, but I thought it'll be it'd be better to be more explain more things uh, in that way, um, and people have less questions, and that way I cover all the fields. Um, I think this pretty much covers the IG tutorial uh, in trading. Uh, I don't see what else I could possibly do here. If you have suggestions, just let me know. But I think I covered everything. Um, maybe a bit of analysis work, but that's everything. So uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching. Bye.